الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely our praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the controller of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessing upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today and tomorrow, perhaps Wednesday, are shaping up to be cold days, just like we had uh, a few weeks ago. But nevertheless, as Allah has uh, told us in the Quran, it will not last forever, it will end. Allah says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ Surely with difficulty will come ease. Surely with difficulty there will be ease. So these fluctuations are important to help us to appreciate the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> So when we are very cold, we can appreciate the warmth we have. We can appreciate our ability to buy clothing that will keep us warm and safe. And of course, when we're very hot and we have the ability to cool down, we can appreciate the blessings that we have. But in order to continue with our discussion on the life of Isa alayhi salam, we have already uh, we've gotten to the point actually where his mother Maryam alayhi salam uh, had this discussion if you like or this dialogue with the angel when he was sent to inform her that she will have a son <coughs> and as we mentioned then she was quite surprised and she she said look this is not possible how can I have a son when no male has come into contact with me, and nor am I one of loose character. <coughs> but as we saw, the angel informed her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> says that He creates whatever He wills. And in any case, Allah says, It has been an matter that has already been decreed. Allah has already decided that he, he will do this. Why? To show mankind that he has power over all things. That he has power over all things. And so she became pregnant. And as a result, she would seclude herself even further from even her family. And eventually she will give birth to this child. And after a few days or perhaps a few weeks, she decided to come back now to meet her family, meet the people. Because she could not stay in seclusion forever. But Allah the Exalted knew all of this. And you know what's amazing, brothers and sisters, is that the, the, the life of Isa alayhi salam, it started with a miracle. And throughout his life there are miracles. And at the very end, when the people plotted to kill him, Allah the Exalted saved him in, in, a, in a miraculous way. It's amazing that his life started, <clears throat> and it didn't really, we can't say it, it ended, but towards the end, when the people plotted to kill him, he was saved in the most miraculous way. It's an amazing life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, knew the reaction of people. To see someone who presented as a righteous and pious person, in particular a lady who presented all the time as a righteous and pious lady, he knew how the people would react when they find her with a child. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again would cause a miracle to be performed by none other than Jesus himself alayhi salam, but this time as a little baby. 
In fact, even before that, when she was in labor pains giving birth to Isa, and after she gave birth to him, because she had secluded herself, she did not have food and water. As Allah tells us in the Quran, He provided that for her. فَنَادَاهَا مَأْمِنْ تَحْتِهَا أَلَّا تَحْزَنِي In Isa alayhi salam, from below her, this little baby spoke to her. Some of us say it's the angel. فَنَادَاهَا مَنْ تَحْتَهَا some say it's the angel who spoke to her. Some say it is Isa himself, the baby, who spoke to her and told her, La tahzani. Don't grieve. Don't worry. Nearby there was a date, uh, a date palm tree. And he told her, Shake this tree. Tasaqat alayki rutaban janiya. That fresh dates would fall down at, uh, to you. فَقُلِي وَشْرَبِي وَقَرِّي عَيْنًا So eat and drink and be happy, be comfortable. Then Allah instructs her through the angel, فَإِمَّا تَرَيِنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا Here are the instructions to her in relation to how she will deal with the people, the community, when she comes to them with a child. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell her what arguments to use. Instead, Allah tells, tells her, if you, come in, if you run into any human being, or when you come to any human being, tell them, إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا Tell them that you have dedicated a fast to the Beneficent One. And this fast is The fast is I will not speak I will not speak to any human being Interesting She's a lady who presented As a pious and righteous lady From, you know, at, 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 from a young age Then she has a child And she's never married Never even engaged and yet, Allah does not tell her what arguments to use with her people. He tells her, you be quiet. SubhanAllah. How then will Allah clear her name? Look at the miracle that is going to happen here. So she comes out to the people. And SubhanAllah, the first thing the people said to her, They said to her, O Maryam, you have come or you have done a horrible thing. مَا كَانَ أَبُوكِ مُرَأَ سَوْءٍ وَمَا كَانَتْ أُمُّكِ بَغِيَّةٍ And this horrible thing is, you have a child, while your father, مَا كَانَ أَبُوكِ مُرَأَ سَوْءٍ Your father was not an indecent man. He was not a lewd man and a womanizer. He wasn't like that. وَمَا كَانَتْ أُمُّكِ بَغِيَّةٍ Nor were you, nor was your mother someone of loose character. At this point, Remember, Allah told her, you don't speak. Because no matter how much she tries to tell the people what really happened, they wouldn't listen to her. They would not hear her. So to defend her name and her honor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused a miracle to unfold at this time. So she pointed to the baby. This is the instructions he was given. You don't speak to any human being. All you do is you point to the child. And the people, of course, reacted as any people would react. They saw a child. They said, They said to her, How can we talk with and communicate with a child who is in the cradle? An infant. So this is when the miracle unfolded. That, that child, that infant, Isa alayhi salam, he spoke. And not just babbling as we say in baby language but he spoke the language that the people could understand it's one thing to make baby sounds it's another to speak a uh, uh, co cohesive and understandable language he said Qala inni the first thing that comes out of his mouth is he said 
I am the servant or the slave of Allah. And in this again, there is the implication, brothers and sisters, that Isa alayhi salam was not the son of God, but a servant of God, a creation of God. Now the people are supposed to realize that normally babies don't speak. And so if this baby could speak, then they should be able to accept that it is therefore possible that he could be born without his mother ever having a, a contact with any male person. See, that seemed impossible to them. So Allah showed them another miracle so that they should realize, <clears throat> they should realize that look, the impossible is happening in, our, in front of our own eyes. And we can hear him speak with our ears. The impossible is unfolding in front of them. It should have made them realize that the claim of, the, of, of, of his mother, that she did not have any contact with any male, yet she had the baby, it should have made them realize that this is a miracle. And so the birth of Isa alayhi salam into this world is in itself a miracle. And he spoke, he told them, and qala inni Abdullah. And he said some other things. al-kitab. He will give me the scripture. <coughs> so as a baby, he was not commissioned as a messenger. He only spoke a few words as a miracle to clear the good name of his mother. Allah protected her good name and cleared it in the most miraculous fashion. He caused the baby to speak. And that, of course, is miraculous because that is beyond what is normal. Abdullah. He said, I am the servant of Allah. Atani al kitab. He will give me the scripture later on when he's commissioned as a prophet. And he will make me a prophet. And he will, he will make me a, a blessing wherever I be. Isa alayhi salam, no ordinary messenger, a great messenger of Allah. That wherever he, he will be, he will be a source of blessing for those around him. And he has ordered me to pray and to pay the zakat as long as I'm alive. And that I should be kind to my mother. <coughs> When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Maryam at the beginning talks about the story of Yahya and Zakariya alayhim as -salam, when he describes uh, Yahya alayhi salam, he said, وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَيْهِ And someone who is kind to his parents, plural, or dual, mother and father. But here, Isa alayhi salam said, وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي and that I would be kind and respectful to my mother. <clears throat> and this is one of the things that the Quran is very consistent on. That consistently the Quran makes it clear that Isa alayhi salam did not have a human father. And that God was not his father either. He didn't have a human father. But he was still a human being created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so here, he says that Allah has also ordered me to be kind and respectful to my mother. And then, of course, as a baby, he didn't speak anymore. So he grew up as a normal baby, would, not speaking, and then learning uh, as the months went by the language of, that he heard around him. And then finally, when he was a young man, and Allah decided it was time to commission him, he was commissioned as a messenger of Allah and the Prophet of Allah. And during the time that he was a messenger, he performed many miracles. He performed many miracles, and some of these are mentioned in the Quran. He, he made out of clay a model of a bird. And then he simply blew on this clay model of this bird, and that clay model, that statue, if you like, became a live bird and flew away. 
كهيئه الطير فتنفخ فيه فيها باذن الله فتنفخ فيه فتكون طيرا باذن الله in surah al maidah towards the end at the very end of surah al maidah there are a number of verses in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the scene that will unfold on the day of judgment and the dialogue he's going to have with Isa alayhi salam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind him of his many favors, his many favors that he bestowed upon him and his mother. And Allah will remind him, if min teen, remember when you used to make from clay the model of a bird, fi, and then you blew on it, fatakunu tayram bi idnillah. And it became or it becomes a bird by the will of Allah. <clears throat> and you were also able to cure blindness and people who were suffering from leprosy. With the permission of Allah. Not by yourself, not with your power. With the permission of Allah. So throughout his life he performed all these miracles. And consistently in his life, he also ordered his people to worship Allah alone. For Allah, he told them, Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum. Surely Allah is my Lord and your Lord. Fa'abudu hadha siratun mustaqeem. This is what the Quran says. Isa alayhi salam told his people, Surely Allah is my Lord and your Lord, fa'budu. So serve Him and worship Him. That is the straight way. Hada siratu mustaqim. That is the straight way. And so the Quran makes it clear that Isa alayhi salam himself never claimed to be son of God, to be part God, to be God, or to have any divine qualities or attributes. In fact, in the verses I told you about at the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, to Isa on the Day of Judgment, Ya Isa, أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَىٰ هَيْنِ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ SubhanAllah. This is the claim that people make. That Jesus claimed he was God. He said he was God. So Allah will ask him, O Isa, Oh Jesus, are you the one who told people to take me and my mother as gods besides Allah? Listen to his answer, brothers and sisters. That is in the Quran. <coughs> Isa alayhi salam will say to Allah in reply, in response to this question, Ma yakunu li an aqula ma laysa li bihaq. He will say to Allah, Lord, I have no right to say that which I have no right to say. I have no authority. It is not befitting of me to say anything that I have no right to say, no authority to say. And the implication is, I am not God. Therefore, I have no, it, is, it, is, it does not befit me to say that I'm God or ask people to worship me. I have no right to say that because I'm not God. He says, I have, it is not befitting of me. It is not fitting for me to say that which I don't have a right to say. If I indeed said that, you know it, O Lord. You know it. You know what is in myself, my thoughts, my ideas. And I do not know what is in yours. You indeed you are the knower of the unseen. The secrets that are unseen. Allah is the knower of that. Then he will also say, I did not say to them, O Lord, except what you ordered me to say to them. What is that? What is it that Allah ordered him to say to the people? This is what Allah told him. This is what he will say. I did not say, O oh Lord, to the people except what you ordered me to say to them. That you should worship Allah alone, my Lord and your Lord. 
وكنت شهيدا عليهم ما دمت فيهم and I was a witness over them as long I as long as I was with them فلم فلما توفيتني كنت أنت الرقيب عليهم but when you raised me up you were the one who was watching over them so he has no knowledge of what transpired after he was raised up and the 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 false claims and accusations that were leveled against him alayhi salam after he was raised up because while he was alive the people did not believe he was god or part god or the son of god this claim would come about after he was raised up from the midst of the people so he will say to allah when i was among them i was a witness to, to uh, over them to what they said and how they used to live and behave but once you raised me up kunta anta raqiba alayhi you were the one who was present and you know best what they were saying or what they said at that time so this is the life of this great prophet and messenger of allah Insha'Allah, next time we will talk a little bit about this end when the people plotted to kill him what really happened because this is also a very important aspect of his life that we muslims need to be clear on at the very least from the quran's perspective <clears throat> so as muslims we need, we need to know what we ought to know and believe about isa alayhi salam this should be very clear in our minds so inshallah we'll continue with that the next time we meet may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and may he open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message he has revealed for mankind in the quran and may he inspire all of us to live by this message may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the truth as the truth and help us to follow that and may he show us falsehood as falsehood and help us to avoid that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be among those who love and rever all his messengers all his great prophets and messengers May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us from on the straight path. May He forgive also for us our mistakes. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.